Hello everyone, Gliderman here. So today we're going to be working on the client portion of our multi-threaded project here with networking. And so basically we're going to be working to have multiple threads in the client so that we can both receive data from, you know, other clients sending uh, data and also have data sent uh, at the same time, or theoretically at the same time. Depends on how many processor cores you have. So, uh, let's get into it. Or I should probably elaborate on that. Like, if you have a single processor, obviously you can't do two things at once, but if you have, like, a dual core or more, uh, then you can do two different things at once. So, let's get into this. So, I'm thinking that we want to separate... Uh, where is it? We want to take this portion here and we want to put that into its own thread and then we're going to move uh we'll, we'll probably keep one of these but this would also be another thread here or i should say right about here so uh what we'll do is we'll move the reading into a new thread so uh let's just basically pull from what we've done with the server connection here where you can see uh, this is extending a thread so we'll go we'll click on the package in our client we'll click uh, this little new class button here and that's going to prop up this wizard for a new Java class so we're gonna just do client connection just like that and we'll click finish wait for that to load and there we go. So we're going to make this extends uh, thread like that. Uh, probably pop up a little warning or something. Or I guess not. Uh, let's reference back to here. So we're probably going to uh, want a reference to the socket and to the uh, client class here. So uh, let's create that constructor so public client connection and then that's going to take a socket we'll call the socket just socket and then uh, client and we'll also call that client and we'll open brace there and then it looks like we need to import some things so we're going to import socket and that seems all good I'm going to move this one over here so that it's next to the client just so that they aren't all spread out so uh, let's just save that real quick. Let's go to the client. So up at the top here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a client, if I can spell it right, client connection up here. Uh, we'll just call it CC. And then uh, down here, after that socket is created, which we're going to basically just move all three of these into the client connection because that's really the main place where it's going to be keeping track of it so here uh, we're just going to uh, redo that with socket there and then we're going to do cc is assigned a new client connection and then that's obviously going to take uh, the socket and also a reference to literally this object and the this is simply the current object that's actually creating it right that instant and so basically that's going to allow uh, this class to reference the client connection and the client connection to reference this class theoretically you could have something that says in here cc dot client dot cc dot client and back and forth but that seems a little bit silly to me um so uh we're just moving uh that socket creation stuff here or data input and output stream my bad so uh it looks like we need to wrap it with uh try catch to make sure that it succeeds or catch if it fails i should say so uh, D in and D out should now be set up. However, they need something to reference. So S is assigned socket so that 
this actually is pointing to something other than, you know, nothing here. So uh, let's save that. And let's reference our server connection and see what we've got here. So it looks like that has a run method there. And then with the server, all it does is creates the connection and then starts it. Okay, so let's go and do exactly that. So in client connection, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna make public void run as a method there. You're gonna see that little triangle appears indicating that it's overriding uh, the thread default run. We're gonna save that, go to the client, and then we're gonna do cc dot start and that will start uh, that thread so now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, not this D out just yet but we're going to take this while loop and then uh, this chunk there so we're just going to do cut which on Mac is command X on Windows that would be control X and I think also on Linux, but whatever. And then we're just going to do Command V or Control V, depending on whatever operating system. And then we're going to wrap everything in a while. Uh, and then we're going to make another boolean should run. We'll default that to true. And then while should run, it's going to do everything in here. And to indent this properly, we're just going to do Command I or Control I on Windows, and that will automatically format it. So let's just say I had everything kind of with wonky formatting. As long as I select it and then do Command or Control I, uh, that would work. So uh, it looks like it needs some things wrapped around it. So we're going to surround that with a try catch. Uh, and we want one around this while loop. Uh, no, actually we won't have it exclusively around the while loop. We want uh, the reply and that kind of stuff in there as well. Uh, simply because if something has gone wrong here, then something will probably go wrong with reading. If, you know, if it can't somehow figure out if there's available bytes, it's probably not going to be able to read anything. So, uh, here we'll probably make it try to cleanly shut down, but we'll work on that uh, at a later point. So, uh, let's save that. And then we're, we're going to have another method, uh, public void send message, or whatever we call it. Is it send text or send string? Okay. So, we're going to do send string to server. And that's obviously going to take a string uh, called data. Let's see what this says. Text. We'll do text as well. Not text. Not test. Text. There we go. So we'll save that again. We'll go back to the client. And basically, instead of doing the d out dot write and then d out dot flush, we're going to just cut that from there. Put that straight into that send string to server and then oh looks like it wants input to be switched to text there and then we're going to wrap that with a try catch all like that save that go back here so now all we need to do here is say cc dot send string to server and then it uh, looks like we're sending the input string, which is read straight from the console there. So it uh, looks like we need to move all of our closing. So uh, let's do that in the client connection again. And what we'll have down here is just a public, uh, public void close method like that. And if it trips this exception, we're just going to call that close method as well. And then in there, all it's going to have is that try catch. So we're just going to cut that from there. And then we're going to paste that straight into that close method. Okay. And you know what? 
if there's a problem writing to it, there, we should probably close it as well. So now I've got that handled there. So I th think that's looking pretty good now. So we've got the send string. Uh, it starts here. Uh, wow, true. Um, reads the next line. Or waits for there to be a next line. And if it's quit, oh, it breaks. And then it calls cc.close like that. And let's just compare that with how we have the server. So it starts. Uh, a difference here is that we don't need a list of all the connections that it's got. So we are perfectly fine there. Um, we've got the should run. Uh, okay. And then in here, we've got the socket, the server, uh, sending the string. Okay, so in this run, it's actually opening up the connection there. Why don't we match that? So we'll just grab this and then drop that straight into the run. And then we'll grab everything else down here, paste that in up there. And it looks like the formatting automatically went nicely. Uh, if this errors, we'll make sure to close. Okay, so let's give that a test. So we'll just click the little drop down. And because we've run it before, uh, we're just going to click on server. So you're going to see it's launching server. And if we just click on the console button here. And there we go. So now we've got the there and we've only got one application currently running okay so now let's click the drop down or click and hold and then go to the client and that should launch up client now so we've got a client there and we've got a server so let's just send the text test okay so that echoed back correctly so that's all good now let's run another client and let's see how that goes so let's just click back here we'll click the drop down click another client well, not the text another client but you get what I mean so it looks like that's another client so now we've got two clients here and here and then the server so let's send the text test two, and then press return let's go to the other client and you can see we've got test two there so we can say hello there press return send that and then we can go to the other client and you can see the text hello there. So there we go. Now we've got a multi-threaded client and a multi-threaded server, and they're all talking together. And so that's kind of like a little chatting type program that we've got there. However, uh, there's a number of other things that we want to be able to do in order to, let's just say, keep track of a connection dropping off. Well, why should you continue to send data to a bad connection? So we're going to need to uh, be handling that. But in the meantime, that's what we've got so far. And it's actually starting to come together. So, I mean, you can't tell who exactly is sending the text. But it's progress. So if you want to be notified the instant the next episode comes out, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.